In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to install AutoGPT. Now, if you're not familiar with AutoGPT, it's essentially a tool that uses GPT-4 and it's connected to the web and you give it a goal and it continues to process that goal using GPT-4 and what it finds on the web until it completes the goal. It figures out what next step it should take and takes that step. And then it figures out the next step it should take and then continues to take new steps, figuring it out on its own until it gets to desired goal destination that you set for it. Now, I recently made a video about AutoGPT, Baby AGI, and Hugging GPT, and how these tools are taking us one step closer to true AGI. And after making that video, I had some requests from people wanting to learn how do I actually install this on my own computer if I wanna use this tool myself. That's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna walk you through how to install it on your computer, and then by the end of the video, I'm also gonna show you a simpler, more stripped down version that you can also use that's a lot easier to set up. So I'll walk you through both of those right now. So to install it on your computer, the first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need Git for Windows. So come over to gitforwindows.org and click on download and install Git for Windows. This is a tool that's going to make it really easy for you to pull GitHub repositories directly onto your computer and automatically set them up. Once you have Get for Windows installed, you're also gonna want Python installed. So head over to python.org, come over to the download section, click on Windows, and you're gonna want the latest stable release. Now, as of recording this, the latest stable release is Python 3.10.11 which came out on April 5th. If you're gonna be doing anything with Stable Diffusion, you're probably going to wanna get the release right before this one and actually download Python 3.10.10. I've had a few issues trying to use the newest version, 10.11 here with Stable Diffusion. And if you're into AI like I am, you're probably not gonna want to just use AutoGPT. You're probably also using tools like Stable Diffusion. So might as well get the version that I know definitely works with Stable Diffusion, which is 3.10.10. So go ahead and click on that version there. Scroll down on the page and you're gonna wanna click on Windows Installer 64-bit. Go ahead and let that download and then run the installer. Make sure that when you do install it, you click this box that says add python.exe to path. That's gonna be important. And then go ahead and click install now and let it install. All right, we can go ahead and close out of that. We're done there. And I'm gonna go ahead and close the Python website. Now you're gonna to wanna to find the directory on your computer where you're going to install it. In my case, I have this E drive here, which is purely for AI stuff that I do. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder inside of my AI folder here and I'm going to call it auto GPT. You can install it anywhere on your hard drive that you want. This is where I'm gonna put mine. And then I'm gonna double click into this folder and then I'm gonna come up here to my command bar where you can see my URLs. I'm gonna click into this command bar so that it's typable and I'm gonna type CMD. This is gonna open up a command terminal here. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go and find auto GPT on GitHub. So the one we want is from Torin Tolino here. So you can simply search for auto dash GPT here on GitHub, search all of GitHub, and then you've got this one called Torin Tolino slash auto dash GPT. You can tell this is the right one because this one's got over 36,000 stars on it. So we'll click into this one here. Now we wanna come over to this green box here that says code, click on the drop down arrow, and then we're gonna copy this URL here. So go ahead and just click these two little squares to copy it. And then we're gonna jump over to this terminal that we just opened up here. And you can see we're already in the folder where we wanna install this. So we're gonna go ahead and type get space clone space. And then we're gonna paste in that URL that we just grabbed and then we're gonna hit enter. And now you can see it just cloned it into our directory. So if I open up this auto GPT directory that we have here, you can see everything from this GitHub area here was just put into our folder right here. Now on this GitHub page here, if we scroll all the way down here, we're looking for the installation instructions. We just did this step one where we did get clone and then the URL. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna copy this little line of code here that says PIP space install space dash R requirements dot text. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just copy that. So now once we're in this new directory where it installed all of these files, we're gonna come back up to our little window here and we're gonna open up our command prompt again. And this time we are now opening it in this new directory that it just created. 
And we're gonna go ahead and paste that code that we just grabbed from GitHub right here into this slot in our terminal. And we're gonna hit enter. And now it's gonna go ahead and do all of the installation of auto GPT here. All right, so that's finished. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize our terminal for a second. And you'll see this file here called .env.template and then click on open with and just open it with a notepad here. Now you can see we've got this text file where we are going to replace some information here. So the first thing it asks for is a pinecone API key. So in order to get your pinecone API key, come over to pinecone.io and sign up for a free account. Once you have a free account, you can log in and when you're logged in over on the left you'll see a little button for API keys go ahead and create a new API key I'm just gonna name this one auto GPT here and we'll create the key go ahead and copy the key value I'm just gonna use this key temporarily and then delete it we'll come over here we'll paste in our pinecone API key right next to pinecone API key and then next to pinecone env it says your pinecone region so the region is right here we'll go ahead and copy this paste that right here into our pinecone region now it asks for your open API key in order to get that you're going to need an open AI key so you're going to come to platform.openai.com slash accounts slash API key if you don't already have an OpenAI account, you're gonna to need to create one. Create a new secret key under your API keys and copy this key over into the OpenAPI key right here. Now the 11 labs keys are not necessary. They're only if you want it to speak back to you in a specific voice. So if you want it to talk to you in your own voice, you can train your voice into 11 labs, plug in your 11 labs API key here, pick your voice ID, and it'll speak back to you in your own voice, but that's not absolutely necessary. We'll go ahead and save this file, we'll close it, and then we're gonna rename this file. We're actually going to call it just .env and get rid of everything after .env. So all it says is .env and click yes. Now all that's left to do is actually run auto GPT. So if we come back to our command terminal here, make sure we're in the same directory where auto GPT is installed and we're gonna type Python space scripts slash main dot py. And if we want it to actually talk to us and actually say what it's doing as it does it, we can put dash dash speak and then it will speak out everything it does. So go ahead and hit enter on that. Welcome back dot. Would you like me to return to being entrepreneur GPT? So as you can see slash here by default, it is set up as entrepreneur GPT with the role as an AI designed to autonomously develop and run businesses with the sole goal of increasing your net worth. Goal, increase net worth, develop and manage multiple businesses autonomously, play to your strengths as a large language model. If you hit yes, it will go ahead and run that script for you. If you hit no, it will ask you to enter an AI name and create a new auto GPT. So we can give this an AI name of Matt GPT. Matt GPT here, dot, I am at your service. Now it wants us to explain the role of Matt GPT. Let's say Matt GPT is an AI bot that hunts the internet for interesting topics related to machine learning to share on Twitter and YouTube. And then it says, enter up to five goals for your AI. Search for the latest news in AI and machine learning. Goal two, find valuable tutorials related to AI and machine learning. Suggest ideas for new content related to what you find. And then if I just hit enter again, I don't have to set a fourth goal, it'll just start running. I am going to search for recent news in AI and machine learning. I want to execute Google. So right now this is on a mode where I have to tell it yes for every single command. So it basically asks permission every time before it'll actually take the next action. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, go ahead and do the search. I am going to browse the MIT news website to learn more about the recent news article in AI and machine learning. I want to execute browse underscore website. So you can see it's asking me now, can it browse the URL mit.edu slash machine learning for the question, what key points can I capture from this page? So let's go ahead and let it do that. 
I will now use my write underscore to underscore file command to keep important information about the recent articles from the MIT news website. I want to execute write underscore to underscore file. So you get the idea. It'll keep on searching these websites for me now, but I have to hit yes every single time I want it to do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this command window here. Go back to the folder this was all created in. Type CMD again. This time I'm gonna put the command python space scripts slash main.py, but I'm gonna put dash dash continuous this time. When I put dash dash continuous, it's not gonna ask me before it does it every single time. I'm also gonna take off the speak command so it doesn't speak to me every single time. And if I hit enter, it's gonna load auto GPT, but it's gonna give me a warning. Continuous mode is not recommended. It is potentially dangerous and may cause your AI to run forever or carry out actions you would not usually authorize use at your own risk. Now, according to the GitHub page, you can exit the program at any time by hitting Control C. So we'll just make sure that we hit Control C to get out of it. But let's go ahead and let it continue to run Matt GPT. But this time it's just gonna go hands-free. I don't have to hit yes every single time. All right, so that's pretty much the rundown of how you install and run Auto GPT on your own local computer. Now, I did mention at the beginning that there is an easier way to do it. There's a new tool that just came out called Agent GPT. It's free to use, but you do have to plug in your API key on this one as well. You can find it at agentgpt.rework.ai. Just keep in mind, reworked is spelled R-E-W-O-R-K-D with no E between the K and the D there. And this is essentially a web user interface for auto GPT. Now this one doesn't integrate with Pinecone, so it's not gonna save stuff into long-term memory like your own local install will, but it will run autonomously for you while you sit here and let it. So this one, you do have to use your own API key from OpenAI still. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that same one that I was using earlier because I am gonna delete this API key as soon as I get done recording this video. So we'll go ahead and copy this one and we'll go ahead and paste this right here into Agent GPT and click save. Now, same thing like we did in our own auto GPT. We can type this as whatever name we want. I'll call it Matt GPT. And this one, it looks like you only enter one goal. Find interesting and valuable AI topics to create exciting content around. Go ahead and deploy the agent. You can see it says added task, scour the latest AI research paper and news articles for emerging trends and topics. Added task, analyze user feedback and engagement data to identify areas of interest and potential content opportunities. Added task, collaborate with subject matter experts to generate unique and insightful AI content. And then it starts executing, scour the latest AI research papers and news articles. You can see it started doing that. Added a new task, identify potential experts in the field of AI and healthcare, ethics and AI, explainable AI, etc. executing. And now it's just gonna continue to run this task here. Added task, identify relevant industry events and conferences focused on AI to attend or sponsor. Identify potential platforms and channels to distribute the created AI content for maximum reach and engagement. Identify and analyze the target audience's demographics and interests tailored to their created AI content, specifically for them to increase engagement and conversion rates. And you can see it's executing on these tasks and it's adding new tasks to the task list. It's executing on tasks, adding new tasks to the task list. And as it finishes stuff, it says task marked as complete. We can go ahead and uh, at any point we want, stop the agent here. And now we can click save up here and we have an entire PNG file of the output here. So I can zoom in on it and you can see here's a giant image of all of the output of everything that this just gave us. So we can review all of the content that it came up with. Or we can come up here and click copy, open up something like a Google Doc here and paste all of the contents of it into a Google Doc, which is probably a little bit easier than trying to read through an entire image. So there you have it. There's a step-by-step -step tutorial on installing AutoGPT on your own computer, which also leverages Pinecone, so it will store information into long-term memory. So it will actually remember some stuff the following times when you come back to it. Or if you want the real simple light version, you can use Agent GPT for free right now. All you gotta do is enter your OpenAI key, which I guess technically isn't free. You know, you are gonna pay for the credits that are used. It'll likely be pennies as long as you're not running it for hours and hours on end. So hopefully you found this tutorial quick and helpful and you were able to set up Auto GPT easily. Excited to see what you guys do with it. Now, if you love nerding out about cool AI tools and the advancements in AI, check out futuretools.ai. This is where I curate all the cool tools that I come across every day. I'm keeping you in the loop on all the latest news in the AI space, all of my videos that I'm publishing, you can find over on the Learn 
learn tab. It's a one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in the AI space at any given moment. And while you're there, make sure you join the free newsletter. Every single Friday, I send you the TLDR of the week, just the five coolest tools that I came across for the week, a handful of news articles, a handful of YouTube videos, and one cool way to make money with AI. It goes out every single Friday. If you join today, I'll make sure you get this Fridays. You can find it all over at futuretools.io. Once again, thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you. If you love nerding out about cool AI tools, make sure you click the subscribe button below. And if you like this video specifically and you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside and it'll also help you see more videos like this in your newsfeed. I really, really appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>